Good day, great job learners. Welcome to today's business studies lesson. This program is brought to you by the Gauden Department of Education in partnership with the Saipono Discovery Center. Today we look into a revision program which is obviously focused on our paper two. So this would be focused on the two main topics, which is your business venture and business roles. And I am your presenter, Sidi Sotlaka. Now, let us look into our learning outcomes. By the end of uh, this unit, we should be able to know the structure of the paper, very, very important. We should also know the main topics that will be assessed in your paper too. And we will be doing exam preparation to say, we'll be looking into section B questions to say, how can you identify from the scenario? How can you identify from your statements? And how should you go about completing your direct questions? And also uh, important is to note the scaffolding of questions we'll be looking into saying how will you be assessed and what are the possibilities of you being assessed in a particular way now let's start with the first aspect because remember we have to cover a lot with your business venture and business role we are having 10 topics so the structure of the paper will be having three sections we have section a section b and c now with your section a in your paper two, you'll be having your compulsory short questions, which will be allocated 30 marks, and you'll be having 15 marks from your business roles and 15 marks from your business venture. And then the types of questions that will be assessed in your section A will be 1.1, your multiple choice, 1.2 will be your choose the correct word, and 1.3 will be your matching items. And the time allocated for that section will be 20 minutes. Then looking into section B now, you'll be having an instruction there to say choose any two questions, and each question will be allocated 40 marks, and you should choose two which will get to a total of 80 and then looking into question two question two will have now questions from the main topic we call business ventures for 40 marks and question three will have now uh, questions from the business roles for 40 marks and then when you look into your question four is your millisinus which is a combination of both your business venture for 20 marks and your business role for 20 marks and the time allocated for the section will be 70 minutes so what is key to note here is that when you are preparing for your exam it's important to look into a main topic that you think you have more strengths on so immediately you decide on the main topic then you are on a better position to prepare yourself for that particular main topic because basically if you have four Focused on business venture, it means you, you will be looking into question two. And then question two for 40 marks, may, maybe you can get a maximum of 38. And then looking into millisinus, you still have, remember, 20 marks from there. And you can maybe get the total 20. And then also look into business role to say now, how can you also obtain the 20 marks? So it is very, very important to be strategic when you are receiving that question paper. Look into the entire question. Maybe if you are looking for question two, look into the entire questions that are on your uh, question two and then decide whether you're going to choose question two, three or four. And then section C now, this is an essay type question. You choose only one question there. That is the instruction. And then question five will be an essay question from the business venture. And then question six would be the question, uh, essay question from the business role. And the mark allocation there is 40 because you choose only one and you should spend 30 minutes on that section. Now, let's start and look into our main topics now the two main topics that are very key for our paper two the first aspect is your uh, business ventures for question two and you also have business rules for question three and when you're looking into question six remember question six will be business role in your section six and then question five will be your your business venture in section c then Business ventures will consist of the following subtopics. In your business venture, you can expect questions from the management and leadership, which is an aspect we covered in term two. You can also expect questions from the investment securities together with questions from the investment insurance also covered in term two together with forms of ownerships that were covered now in term three together with your presentation and data response just covered now in your uh, term three. So 
these are your subtopics for your question two for paper two so you can be asked on the leadership styles identifying leadership styles uh, and also explaining the leadership theories together with investment security there we are looking into factors to be considered before making an investment decision we are looking into your functions of jse your investment opportunities together with the, the risks associated with each uh, 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 investment opportunity and then we also look into the four vital forms of investments that is your rsa retail savings bond we will be looking into shares fixed deposit together with the unit trust and then we also look into types of shares you should know that you only have four types of shares and be in a position to now explain each type of share and then looking into ordinary and preference you should be able to explain the rights of ordinary shares and the rights of preference shares and then and you will also look into the types of preference shares that is your participating non-participating cumulative non-cumulative those become very key when it comes to preparation because you should be able to outline what can be expected from each subtopic and then you we'll also look into uh, your investment insurance they will be looking into non-compulsory insurance we'll be looking into uh, aspects of uh, invest, uh, insurance concepts that is your over insurance under insurance average loss together with the reinstatement and the excess and then you also have principles of insurance which are very key this is your principle of indemnity principles of security together with the principle of of uh your utmost good faith and your insurable interest and then you also look into compulsory insurance types of uh compulsory benefits also look into your uif because it has uif uh, uh benefits when it comes to uh, the, the 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 compulsory insurance look into compensation for occupational injuries and disease and also look into road accident uh fund then forms of ownership we addressed that just now in term three there what is key is for you to be able to identify the form of ownership from a scenario and also be in a position to explain uh, how it can contribute to the success or failure of the business and then we have presentation and data response the focus will be on factors to be considered when preparing while presenting and factors to also to be considered when giving feedback in a professional and non-aggressive manner together with your uh, data response and areas of improvement to say how can you improve for your next presentation and then you'll also look into data response there we'll be looking into how to prepare multimedia presentation we'll look into examples of uh, non-verbal presentation which is your tables graphs diagrams uh, business report consider those a uh, 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 typical exam question they can say name your non-verbal uh, uh, presentations so you should be in a position to name your table you should be in a position to name a graph you should be in a position to name a diagram a business report and uh, an illustration those are non-verbal together with your handouts and then you should also be able to explain the visual aids there then looking into business roles this is your question three or question six we have ethics and professionalism which was covered now in your term one we also have creative thinking and problem solving which was also covered in your term one and then we also have social responsibility corporate social responsibility and corporate social investment together with human rights inclusivity and environmental issues which were covered in term three and we have team performance and conflict management which was covered in term two so those are aspects of your business roles now let's start with the focus of our lesson the focus of our lesson is to revise and try to look into possible ways in which each aspect of your paper two looking into business venture and business role it can be assessed so let us look into the first part of your business venture which is management and leadership remember there we have leadership style so you should be in a position to know that you have how many leadership styles so the first aspect to consider is to say how many leadership styles do you have you have five leadership styles you have your autocratic you have your democratic you have your charismatic lysosphere and transactional so those are the five so if a scenario is to come you need to know that i have to choose from the five leadership styles that's where we start so what does each leadership style say to us what does it mean we have autocratic with autocratic leadership 
leadership style there we say now the leader does not allow employees to take decisions that is your autocratic and then what is key again for you to remember your autocratic is to say where when can we use it the application to say as a leader you cannot only use one leadership style but that that we will talk about when we get to your 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 your, your leadership theories but application has to do with when to use the leadership style so you can use autocratic as a leader in a crisis situation e.g this would be in a case of unforeseen challenges or accidents or when all information is available to solve a problem then you use autocratic looking into another leadership style we have this is your democratic leadership style it allows employees to make now decisions so a democratic leader would allow employees or subordinates or followers to contribute towards the decision making problem uh, uh, process now application when to use democratic the leader should use democratic when group members are skilled and are eager to share their ideas so when the followers are skilled and when the followers have the skill then the leader can use democratic the leader can involve the group of members or the group of workers who are skilled to participate in decision making and then it can also be used when the leader does not have all the information needed to make a decision so this is to say this leader does not have the information, but the employees have the information. So hence it say, and employees have the valuable information to contribute. Therefore, as a leader in that situation, you are in a better position to say, because as a leader, I don't have information. Let me use the employees. Let me use the followers to contribute to the process of making the decision because they have the most valuable information then we move to other leadership styles and then we have liaison fair or free reign now this leader would allow employees to make decisions on their own work method so this is to say this leader will delegate this leader will give a task without informing the word now the employees to say how should they complete the task hence they say the leader allows employees to make decisions on their own work method to say how are they going to complete the task that has to be completed then application when do we use this we use this leadership style when employees are experts and can take responsibility for their action then that is when this leadership style can be used by the leader and then again it can be used when the leader is very busy and delegation of tasks will increase productivity and then another leadership style we have is your charismatic leadership style now the leader here uses charm to influence the team to achieve uh, 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 the best business goals or the vision of the business so with the charm what do we mean we mean that now the leader will be skillful enough to influence the followers or employees to attend or to try to achieve the goal of the business meaning the leader will lead by example in this situation the leader would come early the leader would start whatever task before the followers can do so that they get to be charmed that's the charm we are talking about here we're talking about the charm of the skill use of the leader and then the application now the leader should use this uh, charismatic leadership when they are excellent at selling the vision and achieving now great results then they can use charismatic leadership style and then again this can be applied when the leader wants to inspire hard work amongst employees by showing them how to do it by saying when i say come at six then the leader comes before six to show that they mean what they are talking about so they are using charm to influence the employees or the team to achieve the business goal then the last leadership style is your transactional. Now, this leader uses a system of reward and punishment to motivate employees. So basically here we are saying employees will be rewarded if they achieve a task or complete a task before others. And those who fail to complete the task 
can be punished so that is your transactional application when do we use it the, the 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 this leadership style is applied now when deadlines have to be met on a short notice or when the business is under pressure again it can it can be used when workers have low morale when workers have low morale, it means workers are no longer productive. Maybe they were affected by a particular condition in the working environment. So for those workers to improve or for the leader to improve the workers' morals, they need to try and give a particular reward for good performance or for completing a task at first. Now, we look into a possible exam questions considering what we just did so the possible exam question this is how a question can be assessed in your exam tomorrow we have total computer softwares total computer software specializes in now new computer softwares for various computer programs and then we have cindy the production manager who offers rewards now to motivate employees who meet the set targets and then we also have tom the marketing manager who uses charm to influence his team to work hard and then we also have label the administration manager who gives a task without instructing on how to do it so that is your scenario there you read your scenario you understand the keywords of each leadership style and you'll be in a better position to identify to say which leadership style is required or which leadership style is applicable to the scenario you will be dealing with if it is to come now Identify the leadership style used by Cindy, Tom, and Lebu, and motivate your answer by quoting from the scenario above. This is for nine marks. Now, we have to identify three leadership styles used by these managers of your total computer softwares. And then we have two, which says now evaluate the impact of one of the leadership style identified above. So this is to say the leadership style that would be identified in question one should be the, 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 the focus now to say we are looking into the impact. What are the positives and negatives of those particular leadership styles? So accordingly, when you look into Cindy, Cindy is offering rewards. So the key word there should tell you which leadership style is that. And remember when we are talking about the question that says now identify the leadership styles this should be now uh, to say which leadership style you should recall which leadership style but an aspect that will help you to recall is the key weight to say when we are talking about a leader who uses a system of reward and punishment that leader then is using transactional so the answer there should be transactional because of the keyword reward but remember they say motivate your answer by quoting so when you quote you quote the entire sentence so you have to say, see indeed the production manager offers rewards to motivate employees who meet the set target. So you quote, you take it as it is so that you don't lose your marks. So that is one. And then looking into Tom, the keyword there, Tom uses charm to influence. So a leadership style that talks about charming employees to be productive, to achieve the goals of the business. That leadership style should be considered to be charismatic. So what is key is for you to know the keywords, is to know that which leadership style stands for what. So when we're talking about charm, we know that stands for charismatic. When we're talking about reward and punishment, that stands for transactional because it talks to a transactional leader. And then when we are looking into a leader who gives a task without informing employees on how to complete that particular task, we are looking into Liza's fair, free reign, free reign, free, allowing employees to be free when they are completing their task, free reign. So that is that. And then looking now into the solutions, let's check if now our analysis was correct. Cindy, transactional, two marks for that. Why? Because the production manager offers rewards to employees who meet set targets. It was quoted as it is from the scenario. And then charismatic leadership style, correct for Tom, because Tom uses charm. That was our keyword. And then looking into the first one, reward was our keyword. And then one mark there. Lazarus Fair or Free Rain, the administrator gives a task without an instruction on how to do it. That allows freedom 
for the uh, 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 employees so we call it license fair or free rent two marks for that and the total mark there would be nine three marks sub max and six there then the impact now of transactional what are the positives what are the negatives of that leadership style evaluate the impact of one of the leadership styles identified when you're looking into transactional the positives the advantages is that employees productivity or morale would have to increase it improves their morale because they will be rewarded and then employees know what is expected of them and then it encourages employees to work hard because they will receive rewards and then when we look into negatives when we look into negatives employees may lose creativity as they have to follow rules and procedures immediately start implementing transactional it means employees have to be focused in trying to be fast and immediately that happens they lose creativity creativity is never achieved in a fast pace one has to be patient when they want to apply creativity and then some employees have to may be demotivated if they if they fail now to meet uh, the targets despite having worked very hard and then managing employees might be very time consuming because you need to be there to check who meets the target first and who is the last so that they can be punished so that is how you would get your first six months there if you chose transactional but then if you chose now charismatic a charismatic leader the positives is that they are experts at selling now a vision and achieving excellent results employees are motivated as the leader is energetic and it inspires hard work amongst the employees and then looking into the disadvantages leaders believe more in themselves than the team which now becomes a disadvantage because projects can collapse if the leader leaves the team so it, it really really also adds to the first point to say since they believe more in themselves than the team the project can collapse if the team leaves if the leader leaves and the leader cannot tolerate challenges and regard themselves as re irreplaceable there we look into the impact of license fair employees there the positives that they have maximum freedom and can work independently and the leaders now the leader motivates workers by trusting them to do things on their own and then employees are experts and can take responsibility for their action and then individual uh, team members may develop leadership uh, skills and then looking into the negatives there's lack of clear direction may demotivate employees as much as they are experts but they need to be guided on how now they can address the issue of some particular instructions how they can do it and so this is similar to your mom saying to you please cook chicken for me i'm gonna be late so that is to say your mother there is applying what now your mother is applying lizer's fair because they are delegating a task to say cook chicken but did they specify to say how should the uh, chicken be cooked no hence they're giving you the task now to decide so that can be what now that can be a, a disadvantage because you are lacking direction to say should i fry the chicken should i grill the chicken should i make the chicken stew so you see there's lack of direction there and then workers are expected to solve their own conflict situation because the leader is there remember uh, the situation when when a leader decides to use free reign is to say uh, the leader might be too busy so delegation is the best thing to do so the workers have to solve their own conflict situation productivity might be low if employees lack the necessary knowledge or skills then we look into another possible exam question there the focus is on your theories of leadership when you look into theories you have now a, a, a small sentence that say now tami allocates tasks to employees according to their levels of maturity one now name the leadership theory that tammy is applying and then discuss the leadership theory identified above and explain the transformational leadership theory for eight months so when you're looking into that tammy now is allocating a task according to the level of maturity of their employees so it means tammy is being situational as a leader 
So Tammy's looking into the situation and deciding to say now, because some employees are matured and some are immature, I should also consider that when I'm giving a task. Because if I can give an employee who's immature a task, they might end up not completing the task. So it means that leader is trying to be situational. And when we are talking about being situational by the leader, the leader has to check the situation. The situation can be, are the employees that the leader is leading skilled? Are they unskilled? And then are they matured? Are they immature? So those are those create now a situation and that situation will guide the leader to decide on the leadership style that should be applied for those uh, 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 employees and then note what is key when we're talking about leadership theories is that there is no what impact on leadership theories and situations which can be applied in the workplace so what you should know is to say now be able to explain the word or discuss the leadership theories that is the only thing you should know and then the solution there should be situational leadership theory because Tammy looked into the situation of uh, the staff or of the subordinates and then decided to say now I'm going to give a task based on the majority, uh, the maturity of uh, my employees. And then looking now into discussing the leadership theory identified, this is what it means now. Uh, situational leadership theory says now different leadership uh, characteristics are needed for different situations because employees or followers present different situations so as a leader you cannot only use one leadership style because situations may change so hence it says now different leadership uh, characteristics are needed for different situations for skilled employees then you can apply democratic for employees who do not have the skill then you can apply autocratic so that you give them information on how to complete the task for employees who are experts, you can apply lines as fair. Hence, we say different leadership characteristics are needed for different situations. So what creates a situation is the skill level of your employees, is the maturity, and is also the idea that are they new or forever have been there in the workplace. And then the situation dictates the leadership style that could be applied. So leaders may be flexible and adaptable. And then the success of this theory depends on the relationship that exists between the leader and the follower because if the leader is able to establish the, the type of personality, the type of competency and skills that the employees have, then they are in a better position to deal and use the appropriate leadership style. And then leaders have the ability to get the most suitable people in the right position to complete their tasks successfully. So that is how you should go about that. That is your eight marks there and two marks for identifying. And then explain the transformational theory. The transformational theory is a theory that is applicable, especially in an environment where uh, change is very, very drastic. So it's suitable for a dynamic environment where change could be drastic. Look into the cell phone industry. If you are to be a manager in one of the uh, biggest cell phone industries in the world, you have to really, really be transformational as a leader. You need to come up with new ideas. You, you need to come up with new features or new innovations. So in that industry, it requires an employee to be very, very dynamic and because change could be really, really drastic. And then the personality of the leader inspires the followers to change their motivation towards a common goal. And then looking into another aspect is that the strategic leaders develop long-term vision for the organization and sell it to uh, the employees. And then they're very good at motivating employees to achieve excellent results because these leaders are leaders who forever want change, trust transformation means change hence we talk about them being good at motivating hence we talk about them developing a long-term vision and selling it to the employees and then hence again we talk about their personality would inspire the followers then we look into another uh, 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 subtopic there which is your investment security the focus there should be your functions of JSE. We should also look into investment decisions. These are considered to be factors to be considered before making an investment decision. And then you also look into your 
uh, investment opportunities and their risks together with the forms of investment, types of shares, together with types of preference shares and simple and compound uh, uh, interest. So looking into that, when you are looking into the functions of JSE, a summary version, you just have to know four points here. You should be able to explain four points. Looking into the investment decisions, know all your investment decisions and note that a question like name or list the investment uh, factors to be considered can be there. And then maybe for four marks, you're just supposed to list. But then it can also say explain factors to be considered when making an investment decision so you should be able to explain return on investment you should be able to explain taxation inflation liquidity and risk and then looking into investment opportunities and forms of investment those will be discussed in the next slide and then we will be talking again about the types of shares remember that you have four types of shares and you should be able to explain these types of shares and then types of preference shares, uh, you also have eight of those and you should be able to explain and identify them from either a scenario or a statement. And then simple and compound, keep in mind that when you are writing paper two, it's important that you bring your calculator with you. And then let us look into critical aspects of your investment security. This is your investment opportunity. You should know that there's a difference between your investment opportunity and your investment funds. What you see here is your investment opportunity. You have there your stock files. You have your managed portfolio. You have your 32 days notice account. You have your debenture. You have your business venture together with life insurance. What is key to note here is that this can be assessed in your multiple choice. This can be assessed in your section B as well. In your section B, you might be required to explain the meaning of the investment opportunity and also explain the risk associated with that investment opportunity or you can be required to simply uh, do what you can simply be uh, identify the investment opportunity but when you're looking into your forms of investment you only have four there that is your rsa retail savings bond that is your unit trust that is your shares and fixed deposit what is key there is that in most cases when you're looking into your section B and paper two and looking into question two, the scenario that is developed is developed using the forms of investment because the forms of investment allow for a follow on question. What is a follow on question? It's a question like evaluate the impact of the form of investment identified in question 2.2.1. So you should be able to do what now? Evaluate the impact because remember you will be required to explain the impact which is the positives and negatives of these forms of investment hence it can also be a possible essay to look into because it has more content and it has the idea of positives and negatives to say you evaluate the advantages of investing in rsa retail savings bond and you evaluate the negatives again of investing in rsa retail savings bond together with unit trust shares and fixed deposit now let us look into your forms of investment your rsa retail savings bond your unit trust together with shares and your fixed deposit rsa retail savings bond basically there we are looking into an investor investing with the south african government it allows the investor to receive interest twice a year and then when you are looking into the disadvantages there is that a, a, a minimum of 1000 is needed for one to invest there a minimum A minimum of 1000 is required there and then another advantage is that i said the interest interest is received twice a year twice a year but when you're looking into other investments you don't receive interest twice a year a minimum of 1000 becomes a disadvantage and then looking into a unit trust what do we mean by a unit trust now unit trust is when the funds of different investors are pulled together in a unit trust fund and then the uh, the funds will be uh, allocated or will be invested into the stock market or the joint spec security exchange so that becomes the advantage to say they are going to be managed by an expert who knows about the stock exchange and then the disadvantage could be the idea now that uh, it is not safe for someone who wants to invest for a short period another advantage could be the idea that now 
a minimum or a little amount can be invested each and every month then we also have shares we also have fixed deposit now let us look into a possible questions to say how can you identify those from the scenario so read the scenario below and answer questions that follow so what is key here is to read your scenario and understand we have Litabo who inherited 50,000 from her late parents he chose now an investment where he can aim interest twice a year he also chose another investment where it will be easy to cash in when an investor needs money so 1.1 1 .1, identify two forms of investment so immediately the question says now two forms of investment it means we consider only four options there we consider your unit trust which is what we talked about we consider your shares as an, an, an option we also consider rsa retail savings bond and we also consider your fixed deposit so we also consider your fixed deposit. So those are the four options. But if the question was to say now, identify the word now, investment opportunities, then you are supposed to be in a position to know that the possibility of an answer is from six options, which is your stock fell, managed portfolio, debenture, 32 days notice account, life insurance, those could, could be your possible answers. But because the question says forms of investment, your possible answers can be a unit trust, shares, RSA, retail savings, uh, bond together with the fixed deposit so let's see which one is the answer there they say Litabo chose now an investment where he can earn interest twice a year so which form of investment is that one and then he also chose an investment where he can easily cash in when the investor needs money so which investment is that one as well because when the scenario is being developed they use the impact of the forms of investment so they use the word here they use the rsa here rsa retail savings bond and then looking into the issue of the form of investment that is easy to cash in we are looking into the unit trust there so 1.2 evaluate the impact now so this allows for a follow-on question that i talked about what is the impact of the various now forms of um, investments identified in 1.1 so here we are saying now explain the impact of the forms of investments that were identified and what is critical here is to say when an impact was used as or of in a scenario here for instance, the positives is that with a unit trust, it is easy to cash in. Another positive for RSA retail savings bond is that interest is aimed twice a year. So this makes it now what? This makes it now a mark. Mark for motivation and mark for motivation. So when we are expected to evaluate the impact, you cannot repeat easy to cash in. You cannot repeat interest is aimed twice a year because that would be considered to be repetition. So please be careful, especially when you're looking into a section B. If you have already got marks from a particular aspect or from a particular scenario, just know that you should be careful when it comes to uh, the follow on question. Then Let's see the solutions rsa retail savings bond two marks and one mark for the motivation unit trust two marks and one mark for the motivation which becomes six and then when you are looking into the follow-on question remember we have the follow-on question evaluating the impact of rsa guaranteed returns as interest is fixed for the whole investment period interest are market related and attract more investors and then what did i do i used interest can be received twice a year should a mark be given for that no it should not this is repetition why because we saw this in the scenario so keep that in mind when you write sometimes it's very very important to know more facts in each and every concept you are trying to learn because if this is to happen and this is the only fact you remember and already is on the scenario it means it doesn't allow you to repeat because if you repeat 
you will get an R. An R to say you are not wrong, but already you obtained a mark for motivation using the same point. And then no charge or cost or commissions are payable to this type of investment. And then another tip I could give you is to say when a scenario maybe is developed again, there, there can be a scenario that talks about a safe investment because we should consider the idea that RSA is a safe investment and uh, your, your, your fixed deposit as well, they are safe. But what the examiner is going to add to be able to help you distinguish the difference between RSA and fixed deposit is the idea that with fixed deposit, it is a safe investment with no charges, costs, or commissions payable when you are investing in it. But when you're looking into a fixed deposit, because you are investing with a bank, such as NetBank, Capitec, uh, 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 your, your APSA, then they will you will pay charges for that. But when you're looking into your RSA retail savings bond, you are investing with the government, which will not charge you uh, costs and commissions. So keep that in mind. Immediately the scenario says the investment is safe and has no charge charges, costs, and commissions, you should know the answer is RSA retail savings bond. But immediately the scenario says now the investment is safe, but excludes the issue of no charges, costs, and commission, you should know that that answer should be fixed deposit. And then disadvantages of your RSA retail savings bond is that a minimum of 1000 must be invested and which may be difficult for some small investors to actually accumulate. And then we also have retail savings bonds which are not freely transferable amongst investors. And then we also have the idea that investors have a val should have a valid South African identification which may discourage foreign nationals from uh, investing. And then penalties for uh, uh, penalties are charged for early withdrawals if the saving is less than 12 months old. So those are the disadvantage. And remember, any aspect of the disadvantage or advantage can be used in a scenario. So you should know your advantages and disadvantages very well. Then the impact of unit trust. What are the advantages there? It is managed by a fund manager who buys stock on the exchange, uh, on the stock exchange or JSE. And then it is easy to cash in when an investor needs money. So this we will not mark now. Why are we not marking? Because the issue of easy to cash in was there on the scenario. We saw it on the scenario. So this becomes a repetition. This becomes repetition, hence the R, and a small amount can be invested per month. And then when you're looking into the negatives, the share prices may fluctuate. It's not good for people who want to invest for a short period, and then it's not good for people who want to avoid risks at all costs. Then we have uh, another possible essay. There we uh, a possible question. 1.3, identify the type of uh, preference shares represented by each of the statements below so there the focus is on types of shares when you're looking into that be careful because sometimes a question can say identify types of shares and then when it says types of shares it means we are looking for what bonus we are looking for what founders and we are also looking for ordinary and preference so those are what now those are types of shares but this question says now identify the type of preference so this is your participating non-participating cumulative non-cumulative and then this is your redeemable non-redeemable convertible and your non-convertible so 1.3.1 shareholders are entitled to a share in any surplus profit that is for two marks and then 1.3.2 shareholders are compensated for past dividends and for past dividends that were not paid out when the profits were too low to declare dividends. And then 1.3.3 shares are sold to shareholders at an option of being bought back on certain conditions. So what is key there again, I'll always 
repeat the issue of keywords when you're looking into your types of shares there's keywords that will help you to see the difference in the other types of preference shares when you're looking into a participating for instance preference shares it talks about the idea that shareholders will be entitled to uh, uh, any surplus profit after they have received their fixed dividends because when you're talking about your preference shares these are shares that receive a fixed rate they receive a fixed rate of what? A fixed rate of dividends. And your dividends are, is considered to be a return when it comes to investing in shares. So since they receive a fixed rate, this is to say whether the company makes now 20 uh, million or not, if they, it makes 20 million, you are entitled to your fixed dividend that you agreed to receive. So if your fixed dividend is 10,000, it means you have to receive that 10,000. So when we are looking into 1.3.1, shareholders are entitled to share in any surplus profit. So if the company made more profit, participating preference shareholders may receive a surplus meaning more than what they were expected to receive because according to the agreement they need to receive a fixed dividend of 10000 and then 1.3.2 shareholders are compensated for past dividends that were not paid out when profits were too low when you're looking into companies remember as a form of ownership it says that the failure is the idea that dividends will not always be declared and can always not be declared but when you're looking into the type of preference share we call cumulative it says now whether the dividends were not declared this year or were not declared for five years but at, at, at the end of the day, they would be accumulating. And when they accumulate somewhere, somehow, the company would have to pay the past dividends that were not paid out by the company. Hence, we say past now becomes the key. So this is cumulative. It means they are going to accumulate. They are going to be added to say we owe a, a, a so-and-so shareholder a, a, a dividends from 2019 and dividends from 2020. So when the company performs well in 2023, then they would have to start by compensating the past dividends that were not paid out that is why we call it the cumulative party uh, cumulative preference share and then 1.3.3 shares are sold to shareholders at an option of being bought back on a certain condition so this is to say a company would issue out shares but give an option to say we will require these shares back so they will be bought back, hence we call it redeemable. So when you're looking into the solutions, you have there participating, two marks, cumulative. What is your keyword there is your past dividends would be, uh, your past dividends would be what now would be compensated. And then your keyword here becomes the issue of surplus profits. And then when you're looking into redeemable, these are your, your shares that can be bought back when you buy them, they have an option of being bought back on certain conditions. Then now we look into investment insurance. Now elaborate on the term non-compulsory insurance. You should know the meaning and then you should know the difference between insurance and assurance. You should also be in a position to define the meaning of the following insurance concepts, which is your over insurance, your under insurance together with average loss and reinstatement then excess so what is key here i want to explain something the issue of over insurance and under insurance this is basically a situation this is a situation and then when you're looking into average clause and restatement this is how to deal now with the situation so the situation for the insured can be the insured is over insured and another situation can be the idea that a client or a customer is under insured so when they are under insured how do you deal with that customers under insured you implement uh, average loss and then how do you deal with the customer that now is your 
your your your customer that is over in short you implement what now reinstatement and return them to the same financial position so this is a situation that can happen because it happens when you start maybe buying an asset it doesn't happen maybe the same time you start buying an asset but it happens maybe over time because some assets appreciate we know that a house would appreciate and we know that a car is an asset that will depreciate so that will make now the 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 the, the situation to happen to say with a house that is appreciating you can be underinsured because you might be paying now the insurance amount that is aligned with the initial amount you used to buy the house but the house would have appreciated value but your insurance amount would still be less or will still be aligned with the initial amount you used to buy the house and then when you are looking into your 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 over insurance that is to say when you're looking into a car you would go and buy a car and maybe the car's value at that time is two hundred thousand, and then the insurance you take is for a car that is two hundred thousand. so when the car now is being utilized the car loses value it depreciates but if your premium has not decreased it means you are over insured because you are paying for a car that is worth two hundred thousand. but the car after six months has lost some particular value so that is to say now you are being over in short so those are situations that can be created by such however what is key is to say how should the insurance company deal with those the insurance company should implement average loss and reinstatement average loss when items are under insured reinstatements when items are over insured and access now is the process of claiming for the insurance thing then principles of insurance are also key you have four principles of insurance to consider and your type of insurance what is key there now looking to your concept of insurance this is your over insurance under insurance average loss reinstatement and excess then you also have the principles of insurance the principle of indemnity the principle of insurance at most good uh, faith and the principle of insurable interest so here it should be the principle of security a principle of security there which is applicable to long term and the principle of indemnity being applicable to short term insurance and then at most good fail it has to do with the idea that you need to be honest when entering into an insurance contract and then insurable uh, interest the key word there would be the idea that you need to prove that financially you stand to lose prove that financially financially you stand you stand to lose if the asset if the asset is lost and then those are your uh, principles of insurance together with the concepts of insurance now let me give you uh, just 5 minutes to try and solve this uh, possible exam question the instruction was to read the scenario below and answer questions that follow we have top trader who bought stock worth 400000 but insured it for 300,000. Now, that is a situation. Remember, I talked about a situation to say in your insurance concept, you have two situations, which is your over insurance and under insurance. Now, looking into that, the situation is that what is the value of the stock? The value of the stock is 400,000. But now, looking into your items, the amount insured is 300,000. What is that situation? That situation means the business top traders is underinsured because 300,000 is not equals to your 400,000. However, there was a situation again because a fire in the warehouse destroyed stock that is of the value of 60,000. Now, the first question 1.1 1 .1, name the insurance clause that is applicable to the scenario above. What is the insurance clause that is applicable? The only insurance clause that is applicable here is the average clause. The average clause would be the correct answer for that question. And then 1.1.2, calculate the amount that top traders will receive as compensation from the insurer and show all your calculations so what is key here is to have your what now the amount insured the amount insured amount insured 
over the market value. Multiply by the damages. So now we analyze. We analyze to say what is the amount of insurance there is 300,000 over the market value, which makes it to be 400,000. Multiply by the damages which they are worth 660,000, and then what then would be the amount of compensation that the insurer would give to top trader? The answer would be 45,000. That is your answer there. What is key? Show the calculations and the process, you get your answer. So that is how you are supposed to do it. Just not, don't be excited because sometimes when you know something, you get to be excited. For instance, 1.1, someone can make a mistake and say the name of the insurance clause that is applicable is under insurance. That is wrong. That is wrong. So the clause there is your average clause because average clause would help now to calculate, would help to calculate the solution. So the answer there is average loss. And remember, we said the calculation is 300,000 over your 400,000 multiplied by the 60,000. Then you get your answer to be what now? To be 45,000. So in some questions, there can be a question to say, why maybe did top trader receive 45,000 instead of 60,000? This is because now top trader is underinsured. So, so this is because top trader is underinsured. So because top trader is underinsured, they will not receive the full value or the full amount of damages. They will have to be responsible for part of the amount that they were not paying from the insurance premium. And then we have now direct questions. We have 2.1, which can say outline the importance of insurance for the business. And then we also have 2.2, differentiate between over and under insurance. And then 2.3, distinguish between insurance and assurance together with now discussing any two principles of insurance. Let's look into the solutions there. The importance of uh, 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 insurance or advantages of insurance for the business is that the business will transfer the risk from the insured to the insurance company or insurer. And then the transfer of risk is subjected to terms and conditions of the insurance contract, which we can also consider to be the principles of insurance. And it also protects the business against dishonest uh, employees. And then, and then the last part is that it protects the business against losses due to a debt of a debtor. That's a total of eight. And then we move to another question. That was now the difference between an over and under insurance. Over insurance property or assets that are insured for more than their actual market value, more than their actual market value. But when you're looking into under insurance, property or assets are not insured for their full market value. So in this case, a property is worth 500000 but then it's insured for 400000 so that is under insurance, but over insurance uh, is to say now a car is worth 150,000, but the owner of the car is paying 200,000 insurance. So that is under insurance. So the insurer, which is the company, your budget, your my way, or your, 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 your out insurance can choose to reinstate the insured, to reinstate the insured. But then how do you deal with the issue of a client or a customer who's underinsured as the insurance company? The insurer will implement average loss to determine the amount that will be paid. So that is to say, we are going to look into the calculations there. And then when you're looking into over insurance, businesses will not receive a payout larger than the value of the loss at market value. And then here, when you're looking into the payout, the businesses will only be paid out for the amount of the goods or assets they were insured for. Then, 
the difference between insurance and assurance insurance is based on the principle of indemnity while assurance is based on the principle of security or certainty and then looking into insurance again it covers a specified event that may occur while assurance a specified event is certain but the time of the event is not known so when you're looking into insurance indemnity it talks to short-term now insurance this talks to short-term insurance and this will also help you to explain the principle of indemnity when the question like uh, explain the principle of indemnity is asked and then this covers a specified event that may occur so when we are talking about events that may occur they are associated with particular assets when you're looking into a car a car can be stolen a car can be hijacked but we are not sure whether that will happen or not hence we say the event may occur or may not but looking into assurance, hence we look into the principle of security, which talks to security financial to say now a specified event is certain. It's certain that one would get to age 65. It's certain that one day you would pass away. But the time of that event is not known. So that makes it now key for a person to take now your principle of uh, your, your assurance because your assurance has to do with security, security financially your security financial and then hence we say this is applicable to long term because we are talking about your life insurance here we are talking about your life insurance but then when you're looking into short term we're talking about theft as a type of uh, uh, uh insurable risk then we further look into now discussing any two principles of insurance you have four principles your principle of indemnity your principle of security your principle of utmost good faith together with insurable interest so the principle of indemnity is applicable to short-term insurance so already you saw this when you were looking into the difference between insurance and assurance because it says it is applicable to short term so when you are studying you should be aware that when you're looking into the difference between insurance and assurance you are already looking into the principle of indemnity and security because they are both there and they are included because it is usually applicable to short-term insurance as the insured is compensated for a proven harm or loss and then when you're looking into the principle of security is applicable to long-term insurance where the insurer undertakes to pay out a agreed upon in a, a amount in an event of loss of life or when a, a, a particular date is achieved and then utmost good faith the insurer has to be honest when supplying details and when entering into an insurance contract about where you stay you cannot lie you can't say i'm staying now uh, you know that you're going to buy a brand new car and then you will be staying in tembisa and then when you are now staying or when you are entering into an insurance contract you claim that you stay in santen you you claim that you stay in a gated estate where there's security 24 hours where while you know very well that your car will be parked in a paving or your car will be packed in a yard with no locked gate so you should specify such information so that now it shows that you are complying with the principle of utmost good faith being honest when you are entering into an insurance contract and then insurable interest now this is to say i i like to consider it as a reason why an individual should uh, prove to them that they want insurance a reason why you want insurance so this is to say now the insured must prove that he or she will suffer financial loss if the insured object is damaged so this is to say when you're buying a brand new car and you lose that car you know that you will still be the losses you have to continue paying that car until you are done paying however that will be your reason to say i am interested in insurance because if the car is to be stolen now i would still have to pay the car and uh, the, the, the installments to the bank until the required date is achieved or until the debt is now settled hence now the insurance would have to protect me from that financial loss hence we say you stand to lose or you stand to suffer financially then we look into now the types of compulsory insurance applicable to each statement below 1.1 we have now natalie broke her leg when her car collided with another car and she is uh, demanding compensation and then we have beat 
Pete lost his job due to retrenchment and is claiming compensation from the Department of Labor. And then 1.3, Jamie LTD ensures that now the workplace is safe to avoid unnecessary accidents. When you're looking into solutions there, they are very clear road accident because of the car colliding with another car and then losing a job there due to retrenchment talks toward now unemployment insurance fund. And then when you're looking into the company, Jamie LTD ensuring the workplace is safe to avoid unnecessary accidents that is compensation for occupational injuries and disease act let us look now into forms of ownership the four cars there should be your what your criteria what are your criteria tax implications management capital division of profit and legislation or legal requirements what is key to note there is that with your tax requirements for each form of ownership, they differ and they impact on the success or failure. Management, how decisions are taken by the different forms of ownership also differs. And then capital has to do with the amount of capital that can be obtained by the different forms of ownership and how they are legally owned. And then division of profit also has to do with how profits will be divided and how they are issued. We know that when you are in a company, the, car, the company can decide not to issue out dividends. So when they have not paid dividends, that becomes a failure but looking into a sole trader the owner makes all the decisions the owner will take all the profit as well so that becomes the success of a sole trader and then legislation or legal requirements it has to do with the issue of limited liability and unlimited liability which will become very very key now we have a possible question there read the scenario below and answer questions that follow with this question you are required to just identify the form of ownership and then explain how it can contribute to the success or failure of the business and then identify the form of ownership uh, we have khadija printers which is uh, khadija printers pty ltd now khadija printers ltd needed large amounts of capital for expansion now their management decided to convert the company into another type of company so that they will be able to sell shares to the public on the jse now identify the form of ownership that khadija printers wants to be converted into and motivate your answer so what is key here is that as you can see pty ltd should tell you that this is a private company this is a private company so since the company now is looking to get your, 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 a large amount of capital, which is the money needed to operate the company. So they have to come up with a strategy to convert their ownership to the one that allows the public to come and buy shares and the one that would allow again a large uh, a large uh, uh, number of people to be able to buy or get access to buying the shares. So the answer there was supposed to be the answer they were supposed to be public company because so that they would be able to sell shares to the public on JSE. So the issue of JSE, Joint Spec Security Exchange, gives you an idea that these are public, this is a public company because a public company is able to sell shares on the stock exchange. Then that's one mark for motivation. Then we move to how now they're, they're explaining how division of profits and taxation can contribute to the success of the what now of the form of ownership identified. Now, division of profit, high profits and good returns to shareholders uh, indicate the success of the company, which will increase the value of shares. And then the failure, however, is the idea that shareholders may sell their shares, which, uh, which when we consider will lead to dividends we will sell the shareholders will sell their shares when dividends are low and resulting in a drop in the share price and then when you're looking into taxation the success of the public company they can obtain tax rebates which is a tax advantage or reduced tax because they would be involved in csi projects and then when you're looking into the failure they are subjected to double taxation e.g shareholders may pay secondary tax this may have a negative impact to a company that is already financially struggling so that is how you get your aid there then we move to presentation and data response what is key to know today while talking about presenting information 
to the audience what should you consider factors you need to consider factors when preparing for a presentation factors while presenting and then you should also provide feedback in a, a, a non-aggressive manner and improve a presentation for the future together with now the impact of visual aids so when preparing we're talking about making sure that the content is relevant we're talking about preparing a rough draft with the logical structure which includes your introduction body and conclusion we're talking about rehearsing before the presentation we are also looking into knowing about the venue considering the time and also also anticipating possible questions that is when you prepare while presenting you should not hide uh, 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 you should not hide in the equipment so that people don't see you you should also make sure that when you speak you become audible so that they can hear you so those are factors to be considered while presenting and then feedback ensure that now you listen to the question before you respond and also make sure that you do not address the person but you address the question so that, it, it, that those are ways in which you can show that you are non-aggressive and you're professional in your manner of uh, responding to feedbacks and an improvement to look into how you used humor also look into the content to say is it relevant also reflect on any critical uh, criticism from the members of the audience and also what is key becomes the issue of visual aids now these are the factors in a summarized version. When preparing, you need to have a clear purpose and main points of the presentation. Prepare a rough draft of the presentation with the introduction, body, and conclusion. Be fully conversant with the content or objectives of the presentation. Rehearse in order to be confident and consider the time frame for the presentation. And then looking into aspects while presenting, establish credibility by introducing yourself at the start of the presentation. Show the most important information first and make the purpose of the presentation clear at the start of the presentation and involve the audience uh, with a variety of methods and maintain eye contact. Then provide feedback you can provide feedback by making sure that you become polite when answering to questions ensure each question is understood before responding be honest when responding to questions and keep answers short and to the point then we have now a possible question we have wali's presentation wali is a financial manager and presented a financial report during the annual general meeting he considered the time frame for a presentation he also rehearsed to ensure confidence in her presentation wali maintained eye contact with the audience and he also used appropriate gestures now you were supposed to quote there that is very very simple you just quote the questions or you quote factors to be considered when preparing and factors to be considered while presenting so factors to be considered when preparing he considered the time frame for a presentation he also rehearsed and then factors while presenting maintained eye contact during and then he also used appropriate gestures and then that's how you get your formats there then 3.1 the marketing manager of Broadway Bank is requested to do a PowerPoint presentation and distribute handouts on their new marketing strategy. Now, discuss the impact of PowerPoint presentation and advise the marketing manager on the advantages of using handouts during the uh, presentation. What is the impact of using PowerPoint? It is easy to combine with sound. And then it is simple, less less that slides, which may capture the interest of the audience. And then negatives is the idea that unprofessional handling of the PowerPoint presentation material can render it ineffective and it may lead to irritation or, or, or resulting in the audience losing interest. And then it is less effective. It is less effective for people with visual impairments. That is for eight months. Then looking into the solution again of uh, the advantages of using a handout meaningful handouts may be handed out at the start of the presentation to attract attention give the audience at the beginning before the presentation so that they can see what the presentation will be about and then hard copies or notes or, or copies of the slides uh, can be distributed at the end of the presentation as a reminder of the key facts that were shared during the presentation and then it is always easy to update handouts with recent information or developments that is how you get your six months there then we move to business roles 
business rules. Remember the focus, ethics, and professionalism there. We have creative thinking and problem solving. We have social responsibility, CSR and CSI, together with human rights, inclusivity, and environmental issues, and team performance and conflict management. So ethics and professionalism, what is key there? The difference between ethical and professional behavior becomes very key. The king code principles, remember you have three, but most of the time they assess two, which is your transparency and your, your, your accountability. Then you have your unethical and unprofessional business practices. What is your unethical uh, that should be your tax evasion, unfair advertising, and pricing of goods in rural areas. Looking into unprofessional business practices, this will be your abuse of work time, this will be your sexual harassment, and this will be when you are looking into your uh, unprofessional uh, and professional business practices, this would be your unauthorized use of workplace funds and resources. And then recommending ways in which professional, responsible, ethical and effective business practices could be conducted is also another aspect that you should know how to, to do it and explain sentences relating to that aspect. Now, looking into the different ethical behavior, these are the principles of what is wrong or right in the society. Hence, this is it has to do a lot with the business conduct the business conduct to say how is the business behaving towards the community or society because when we are talking about the society the society is a combination of all communities so that's what we mean when we are talking about the society and then when you're looking into professional behavior it is what is wrong or right inside the business so to the worker now what is wrong or right when you're inside the business and then conformity to a set of values that are morally acceptable that is your uh, ethical behavior. But when you're looking into professional behavior, a set of standards of expected behavior when you are within the working environment. There's some working environments whereby employees are not allowed to smoke. There's some working environments whereby obviously, not some, all, they would not allow you to drink alcohol while you are inside the workplace. Because as a worker, that there's a set of standards that you are expected to behave to, to, to comply with. And then when you're looking into ethical behavior, some uh, forms part of the code of conduct to guide employees to behave ethically. And then professional now behavior is applying the code of conduct of professional behavior or the business. Then unethical now, we are looking into unfair advertising, pricing of goods in rural areas and tax evasion. That is unethical. This is done again by the what? By the business. Hence, we started by looking into the difference. But then looking into unprofessional, this is done now by the what? Workers. Workers can do what now? Sexual harassment. Because when you're looking into a business, we can't say McDonald's and KFC was trying to do sexual harassment. Who's McDonald? So when we are looking into unprofessional business practice, we will say now workers within now KFC, uh, one worker was trying to harass another worker sexually. That becomes sexual harassment. So it is a practice that has to be now affecting workers within. But when you're looking into the business, this can be unfair advertising. This will be affecting the society. This can be as well affecting uh, pricing of goods. It is also affecting the what now? The, the, the customers who are in rural areas. And then when you're looking into tax evasion, this is a business now trying to avoid paying tax, which will affect now or involve the government because the government is the recipient of the tax. Then. Abuse of work time, who's doing that? The work. Hence, we say unprofessional from a profession. I'm a professional teacher. I'm a professional nurse. So abusing my work time, it means I'm being unprofessional. And then unauthorized use of workplace funds and resources. Now, that is also considered to be unpro uh, uh, unprofessional business practice. If I'm to take a chalk and use it in my, in my house, then I'm being unprofessional because I'm using the resources of the state or the government as my employer to what now to benefit myself so that is unauthorized use of workplace funds and resources and it's applicable to workers then examples there what is your examples of an uh, unfair advertising giving false labels or labeling selling second-hand goods as new and then looking into pricing of goods inflating prices in the rural areas because there's no competition charging higher for goods of inferior quality in rural areas is also considered to be your 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 
your uh, an ethical and then another example of tax evasion or looking into an example of tax evasion businesses that do not declare all their income to SARS are considered to be doing tax evasion and falsifying the business financial statements is also considered to be tax evasion now possible exam questions there is your statements for instance identify the unprofessional business practices there are three unprofessional three sexual harassment what else we also have your 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 unauthorized use of workplace funds and resources and abuse of work time so we have the director of knz consulting uses the business credit card to pay for their personal expenses and then when you're looking into employees of zamu zamu attorneys spends more time on social networks during office hours than on their duties what are the solutions there which and professional business practices are implicated there the director using now the business credit card to pay for their personal expenses that is considered to be what unauthorized use of workplace funds and resources so the answer there is two months then looking into abuse of work time because now zamu attorney spends more or their employees spends more time on social media meaning they're abusing their work time while they were supposed to be helping clients they are busy on social media so keep one thing in mind i know you're the generation of social media instagram uh, your tiktoks and but if you get into the workplace you should know that you don't have time to tiktok you have time to work so if they see you or one of your videos trending on tiktok that can be considered to be a piece of work time because while you were supposed to be working you were busy on tiktok trying to attract or trend so that can be considered to be now and what now an unprofessional uh, behavior because you are abusing work time busy with your uh, uh, social medias which should be used in the free time then we have a scenario now read the scenario below and answer questions that follow we have natasha deco the management of natasha deco treats their employees with respect by by recognizing the work well done and uh, natasha deco ensures that all employees have access to equal opportunities and then they engage in environmental awareness programs now code three ways in which natasha deco conducts businesses or their business in a professionally responsible and ethical way for three marks so you just quote there that is the simple three marks there and then looking into another possible exam question identifying that the, the problem solving techniques there we are moving now from ethics and professionalism coming to your creative thinking now identify the problem solving techniques represented by each statement below uh, for six marks now let's see we have Carl who gives employees the opportunity to suggest ideas randomly, which then are written on a flip chart. So the idea that they suggest ideas randomly and they're being recorded on a flip chart, you consider that as your keywords. The management of Tony Consulting have listed advantages and disadvantages of changing their business structure. So the issue of the advantages and disadvantages should give you your answer there. And then the employees of Shoba fashion design have been requested to generate quietly as many ideas as possible then share them with the other employees for six months now what are the solutions there the issue of randomly allowing employees to give ideas and writing them on the flip chat that makes the answer to be what now brainstorming that should be brainstorming and then looking into tony consulting which was evaluating or checking the advantages and disadvantages of changing their business structure the aspect of changing there and looking and evaluating at the advantages and disadvantages makes the issue now a what it makes the issue the force field analysis because it's applied when the business wants to change an uh, an aspect and then the employee of shoba fashion designer have requested to generate quietly as many ideas as possible and then share them with others so some individuals or some of you guys can think the first answer was supposed to be nominal group this cannot be nominal group because in a nominal group the key word for nominal group is the issue of what now generating ideas quietly and silently and sharing them with others so the issue of generating those ideas quietly makes the answer there to be nominal group so we are brainstorming for field and nominal group so that is how you get your mark there then we enter now 
social responsibility, the triple bottom line, the triple bottom line, very key for your social responsibility. Remember social responsibility, it is an ethical viewpoint that says an individual or organization has to benefit society. And then in benefiting the society, they have to think about the triple bottom line, which is your profit or economic, people or social, together with planet or environment. The, how can they benefit now the society using these three aspects? So we also have socioeconomic issues. This is your HIV and AIDS. This is your unemployment together with poverty. So looking into the two, most of the time, they would assess HIV and AIDS and poverty and unemployment or HIV and AIDS and poverty. So you keep that in mind. They would never assess poverty and unemployment. So the aim here is to say, how can the business deal with these three issues? Then the well-being of employees, the focus there is to say, the business has to contribute time and effort towards the well-being of the employees and the well-being of the community. Corporate social responsibility is also an aspect to consider when you're looking into that. You need to know the purpose together with the components and the impact of the corporate social responsibility. Then corporate social investment, you should know the, the purpose together with the focus areas. Remember, you have four focus areas together with the impact. Now, let us look into the possible uh, 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 exam question there. Section B, read the scenario below and answer questions that follow. You have June traders. June traders decided to invest their surplus profit in corporate social investment projects and they invested towards the community by donating school uniforms and sporting facilities were also provided to June traders to promote a healthy lifestyle. Then, quote two ways in which June traders contributed to the well-being of their community. And then 3.1.2, explain other ways in which June traders uh, can contribute to the well-being of their community. So the issue here, explaining other ways, meaning you cannot include the ways that are already on the scenario. What are those ways in which now June traders were, was contributing towards their community? They donated school uniform to lenders within the community and also ensured that they provide a sporting facility for uh, um, the community to promote now a healthy lifestyle. So those are the two. So you cannot include them in 3.1.2 because the question says explain others beside what is in your scenario what is on your scenario should not be included for six months now what are the solutions you just code as they are one one then you get to there then we move to the idea of your other now, the business should improve the general quality of life of their community. That is correct. Another one is that they should now uh, ensure that the, the product they supply does not harm consumers and then avoid engaging in illegal practices such as employing children under the legal age. That's how you get your six because now there won't be repetition because you didn't take any point that was from the scenario. And then make ethically correct business decisions by not engaging in unfair or misleading advertising. Then you can have a direct question which says evaluate or analyze the impact of CSR on the business. What I need you to understand is that the impact of CSR and CSI, they are the same. You should not change responses. You should not look for any other response. Just know that when you are looking into the, the impact, because CSR and CSI work interchangeably, you should know that CSR focuses on now the internal and making sure that the business is being responsible internally. But when you're looking into CSI, the aim there, you're looking into the community, investing towards the community. What are the positives there? A business that implements or that invests towards the community may attract experienced employees and increase the pool of skilled labor, which could increase productivity and then a positive or improved image as the business looks after the employees or conducts itself in a responsible way. And then a business may have a competitive advantage resulting in good publicity and an improved reputation. However, what are the negatives? Customers may not buy their products or services, resulting in a decrease in sales, and then social spending reduces the business or economic efficiency, which may make the business less competitive. And then detailed uh, reports must be drawn up. Then the impact on the uh, community now, 
It will say social, social economic issues are attended to, which will improve the welfare of the community and training opportunities in the community will increase the possibility of appointment of members of the community. However, the negatives when it comes to investing towards the community, the businesses are not always equipped to address the social problems and communities tend to depend on CSR uh, programs and struggle to take their own initiatives. Then we have Temba Chicken Farm identify two socioeconomic issues there that affect Temba Chicken Farm. So, Temba Chicken Farm specializes in selling live and slaughtered chickens in the local township and some of the employees of Temba Chicken Farm stay absent from work on a regular basis due to the idea that they have to collect ARVs from the clinic and the majority of the communities are not economically active. So the solutions there were supposed to be HIV and AIDS. Why? Because some of the employees stay absent, which is affecting the productivity of Temba Chicken Farm because now they have to collect the ARVs at the clinic. That is the motivation. And then unemployment because the majority of the community are not economically active. And then remember with unemployment, we can also draw a reason to say this can lead to crime, this will lead to poverty, and hence it becomes a serious disadvantage. Then human rights in the workplace. When you're looking into human rights in the workplace, we have the right to privacy, we have dignity together with equity and freedom of speech and expression together with information and security, uh, safety, security and protection of life. Then we also have diversity issues, your poverty together with race, together with gender and language, together with age and culture, together with disability. Environmental issues to be considered, you need to know the responsibility of the employer, the responsibility of the health and safety representatives in protecting the workplace. This is very key, it's always assessed. Just keep that in mind. Responsibilities of the employees together with how the business can protect the environment. The possible exam question, we will be looking into statements there regarding the, your, your, human, your human rights. So employees are not forced to do degrading or embarrassing work. What is that human right? Managers ensure that employees do not suffer because of discrimination. Businesses allow open communication or channels between management and employees, and employees are provided with protective clothing together with employees' personal information being kept confidential. What are the answers there? Looking into embarrassing and degrading the answer there should be dignity that's too much for that and then employees ensure that employees that do not suffer because of discrimination that should be e equity because it has to do with equality one not feeling less important and then allowing open communication channels between management and employees expression of what now freedom of expression and uh, speech freedom of speech and expression and then businesses allowing open communication that is that and then employees are provided with protective clothing that is safety security and protection of life and then employees personal information being kept confidential that is privacy there then another possible question we have now diversity issues we have alisba printers Elizabeth Printers now employs more males than females and their building does not facilitate or accommodate people with wheelchairs and English is the only medium of communication allowed in the workplace despite the fact that some employees do not understand or speak it. Now, identify three diversity issues and motivate your answer by quoting from the scenario. So we will be looking into the first issue which is now what males and females talks to which issue of diversity gender one mark motivation disability correct because of the issue of wheelchairs and employees being accommodated for that language two marks and english being the only language of communication that is one as motivation and then you get your nine there then we move to team performance and conflict management this is the last part what is key to know the criteria of a successful team you have four characteristics of a successful team you should know the sentences just move five is enough and then team dynamic theories together with stages of team development that is your storming that is your forming storming norming performing and adjourning then you should also know the causes of conflict how to handle conflict together with dealing with grievance 
and dealing with difficult personalities and employees. Now, possible exam questions there identify the stages of team development applicable to Shriburi construction team. In each statement below, team members confronted each other's ideas and fight for leadership position. Which stage is that one in your team development stage? And the team is aware of its aims and makes decisions without supervision. And then team members gather information about tasks that must be performed. So when team members confront each other's ideas and fight for leadership position, which stage of team development is that one? So the stage that is applicable there is storming because when you're looking into storming this is when now employees confront each other's idea and fight for leadership position or also fight for how things should happen within the team and then looking into performing the team is performing because they know the aims and strategies and make decisions without supervision and then another aspect there becomes the issue of information about the task must that must be performed. So team members gather information. So this is the beginning stage. So the beginning stage then should be considered to be forming. So you get your six marks like that. This is your stages of team development. Then looking into your criteria, this can also come in a, a format of statements or scenarios. Now, when you're looking into the statements, identify criteria of a team performance in each statement below you have the following team uh, the teams continuously review their progress in order to rectify mistakes all team members take part in decision making team members are committed towards achieving a common goal and then another aspect is that team members show respect for knowledge and skills of others so when you're looking into continuously reviewing the progress in order to rectify mistakes that's a, 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 that has, it has to do with communication and then all team members taking part in decision making that has to do with what now involving everyone which is cooperation because we are talking about all members so the key part here review when you are during the review process you are sitting and talking and communicating hence the criteria there is communication and then team members are committed towards achieving a common goal that should be now interpersonal attitudes and behavior and then showing now respect for knowledge and skills of other members should be shared values looking into the solutions communication yes because of the review part and then all members taking part in the decision making that is cooperation and then looking into interpersonal attitudes and behavior that is because of sharing a common goal and showing support for one another and then another one is shared values because of respecting each other's knowledge and skills then we look into a summary of our lessons. Remember, we looked into management and leadership. We looked into investment securities. We looked into investment insurance together with forms of ownership and presentation and data response. And I looked into some of the WhatsApp questions. There's a question there asking for a possible essay. With paper two, everything can be assessed, guys. So you just have to make sure that you know all your work so that you are covered. And remember, look into uh, each main topic, decide which main topic is suitable for you and which main topic you show confidence and have strengths with and then decide on that to say this is where you're going to focus so if you decide on business venture it means a possible question can be securities can be uh, can be insurance can be securities can be management and leadership and can be presentation but forms of ownership has little information because when you're looking into it in some years they would combine investment insurance with investment securities or they would uh, combine insurance with forms of ownership and then that makes everything to be accessible so we cannot be in a position to tell uh, which uh, essay is coming or which essay is not coming so this was just to help you remember and be in a position to be able uh, to identify the correct uh, concepts when you're looking into section b ethics and professionalism you should also know that in your business role creative thinking and problem solving and social responsibility together with human rights inclusivity and environmental issues and team performance conflict management so looking into those as well this can be an essay social responsibility can be an essay combined maybe with your 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 your, your human rights and inclusivity and then with a, a total now team performance and conflict management so it makes everything to be important so it's a matter of you deciding on which aspect you're going to focus on so 
Thank you for watching our lesson. Just remember one thing. Your story is a story of success. And as I always say, tough times never last. But tough people do last. Thank you for watching.